Hi, I'm Ian Body. I've been composing and releasing electronic and ambient music since the late 1970s. Modular synths have always been at the core of what I do. Indeed, the first synth I ever used at Spectre Arts Workshop in Newcastle was a VCS3. In 1982, I bought my first Roland System 100M, which I still have to this day and sounds as good as ever. In 1999, I launched the DIN Electronic label, which currently has released over 100 titles on CD, vinyl and download. One of these was the original Tone Science album, DIN 49, which came out in 2016. This was my most experimental album in that it was comprised of five aleatoric self-playing patches using my large surge system. This was the inspiration for starting the Tone Science sub-label, which focused in on musicians using modular synths in all sorts of genres and styles. With such a lifelong interest in these instruments, for me the next step was to design my own modules. For this to come to life, I have partnered with AJH Synths for a few reasons. Alan Hall, who runs AJH, as well as being their chief designer, is from my native northeast of England, so we can understand each other's accents. We're also of a similar age and have an analogue synth heritage. Plus, and most importantly, I wanted to team up with a company who do top quality modules, both in terms of their sound, but also their design, and AJH synths certainly tick all those boxes. I wanted to bring some of my own working methods that I use in composing with these instruments to bear on their design. And so the first module in the AGH Tone Sign series is the Triple Cross. This has three channels of panning and crossfading and is based on one of the core patches that I used in my original Tone Signs album. Behind me is the basic patch for this on my Surge system and now this technique can be explored in 14 HP of Eurorock. The idea here is that four oscillators are tuned to a musical scale. In this example I'm using the diminished scale, so C, D sharp, F sharp and A, which has a particular flavour to it. The first pair of VCOs go into the first crossfader and the second pair into the next. The two mono outs from these then go into a third crossfader. By using three slow non-synchronous LFOs to modulate the crossfaders, the final output is a slowly morphing mix of all four oscillators constantly change and never really repeat. I liken this random element to watching a stream flow by. It's superficially always the same but in actual fact it never ever repeats itself. This basic patch can then be built upon by say sending each of the four oscillators through a filter and also slowly modulating those two with four different non-synchronous LFOs. Now adding some echo and reverb to the overall patch gives us a beautiful soundscape that can slowly evolve and unfold. Feeding the LFOs manually can also give some nice textures to the overall feel of the patch. Thank you. 
So as you could hear, the LFOs nearly got into all durated territory there. This next patch uses four oscillators tuned to a chord and we are using the actual outputs of those oscillators at audio rates to modulate the three channels of the triple cross. So here's a simple C minor seventh chord, four oscillators being more for the triple cross. Now when I patch in each of these in turn to modulate channel three, This last one, if I modulate the pitch of this, you're getting all sorts of strange ring modulator type sounds. The triple cross can not only handle audio signals, it's DC coupled so we can use these morphing and crossfading techniques with control voltages too, as this next patch will demonstrate. In this patch there is two LFOs into channel 1, two LFOs into channel 2, although one of them is actually an oscillator, and I can use these lever controls to just mix between the two, so at the moment you're only hearing the first two come in with an LFO control to morph between those two and it's controlling this oscillator over here. I can then bring in the second pair and take the first pair out. Bring the first pair back in. And then also use an LFO to morph between those two on the third channel. To create some very complex modulation shapes. And then we can add a little bit of effects at the end because it always makes everything so cool. So I hope these patch examples have given you some insight to how the triple cross can work in the modular environment. From my initial idea with crossfading between multiple sources, the triple cross has taken on a lot of extra functionality. With panning, up to three VCAs, mixing and audio rate modulation, and with it being DC coupled allowing for CV morphing. I'm really excited to see what modular synth players do with the triple cross. Happy patching. <laughs>